they do over here what's called a Feretta hearing, and a Feretta hearing is where they're required to do a Feretta hearing. It, it's where they're going to advise you on whether you whether you should have representation or not and the pros and cons of it. So it's their way of covering their, their ass so that later you can't claim a defect in the case because you didn't have counsel. So they did. They alleged. They alleged they did that seven months ago with me. But here's the here's the lesson, and I shared this last night on a call, and people really were thrilled by it. I think, semi accidentally, I put in a notice, and fortunately I hand wrote it too, and it just said notice errors. I do not understand legally legal meaning terms, nor the customs in the legal society, and so I rescind anything I've said or not said, all my actions or inactions that may have indicated I'm other than a man and that I'm in any type of jurisdiction other than a common law court of record. That's all I put in. And they flew a guy up from Washington to have an emergency hearing. They demanded I be at the hearing. They took the federal defender that they appointed to me and, and had her come. And this is the interesting part. So they have this stupid hearing trying to novate all my paperwork, right? You know, they're trying to get me to say something that would unwind what I had filed into the case. And so mm -hmm. the prosecutor stands up and says, we've done everything to help uh, this guy. We've, we've given him months and months to go over the, um, the discovery. And he says, you know, we, we realize there's 80,000 pages of discovery. <laughs> so it was kind of stupid the way he said it. So then they, the judge looked at me to say something, and I said, what is discovery? Is that when you discover foreign lands? Uh, what does discovery mean? Let me. <laughs> you should. You could have heard a pin drop in that court for about ten minutes. It was almost. It was very uncomfortable because nobody would say a thing after that. So, but then Gus made a very good observation. He said, "John, probably because you did that, they didn't do a competency hearing." He said, "I'll bet you." or I, I took the implicit message was they would probably have loved to have demanded that I have a competency hearing because I don't, I'm not responding to their language. But because I put that notice of error in where I, you know, overtly said I don't understand your language, they couldn't do it. Because there's no doubt in my mind they would have done it to me by now. Not funny. So that's a good that's a good little lesson for people to remember if they're ever being prosecuted is to get something in right away that says. Uh, and by the way, I not only said I don't understand it, I said I don't have any. There's no law that requires me to understand it. And they didn't rebut that at all. Yeah. So that was uh, that was one positive thing that came out of this so far. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was listening to John, and uh, he was talking about the Feretta hearing and how the uh, the judge mentioned that he knew the prosecutor very well. That's something that's an absolute no-no. And the reason I believe he was doing that is he wanted to suck John into the jurisdiction of the court by, by trying to get John to file a motion to remove the judge because, you know, he was not qualified. He was not uh, – he was biased because he knew the prosecutor. So I, I think that was an attempt to get John to put a motion into the court. The other thing is the uh, after that mm. Reddit, there was a uh, a uh, an order that came out, and in that order the judge referred to John as the defendant and didn't really the order was kind of there was nothing real significant about it except that he talked to you know he talked about John as the defendant. So there's a lot of these things that they do that you know, we don't really notice on the surface because we're so used to seeing that kind of paperwork. 